Hey guys, Jordan here. Welcome back to the fourth and final part of our amazing compact bench build. Uh, we're gonna do finishing touches, little things. We're gonna build two cool sliding router bit trays. Uh, and the part that I'm probably most excited about, we're gonna do a table saw extension wing. It is easy to make and it sets up and breaks down really fast and stores underneath the table saw. Turned out a lot better than I thought it would because I was kind of making it up as I went. So this is very exciting. Uh, if you have a DeWalt 745, which is the saw I have, it works perfectly for that. Otherwise, it's probably pretty easy to modify if you kind of check out the way I did it for your own table saw. All right, enough jibber jabber, let's get to it. Quick fix, in using the table saw, I noticed that I could still get a little more dust into the tray that we made below it if I widened that hole a little bit. So I did about an inch to the right. Then I reattached it and sprayed the whole thing a flat gray to better match my general disposition. To make the router bit trays, I first made one on a scrap piece of two by four just to make sure I was doing it how I wanted. Drill a hole through on my drill press and drew out the side for like a pinch handle. And I cut it out on my bandsaw, both vertically and then took the edges off on the horizontal side and then use my drill press spindle sander, which needs to be tightened right there, to smooth it out. I forgot to get it on camera, but uh, I ripped the side that attaches to your drawer pull at five degrees, and that'll tilt it towards you a little bit while you're using it. Then I repeated the process to make a second one and spray painted them both red. Fabulous. Over at the drill press, I chucked in a half inch Forstner bit and proceeded to make a series of holes on both sides of the tray roughly three quarters of an inch deep to hold all the bits. On the second one, I spaced it out even more, and then depending on the type of bits you have, uh, you're gonna wanna play around to give it the best fit. Voila. To mark where it's gonna go, I just held them there to make sure that they will clear the door when it shuts. Then we can attach our slide directly to the bit tray and pop them on in. I had them up a little too high, so when I went to put them both in and out, boom, snagged. It's all right though, it's a two by four. There's plenty of surface space to move your slide up and down to get it exactly where you need it. So I played around with it a little bit, readjusted, reattached, and now cleared it. Perfect. A lot of people have individual drawers for their bits and there's certainly room to do that on the side we have there but I kind of like these. They're just really simple. Um, they're tilted towards you. You don't have to bend over. I guess if you had a lot of bits, you might want to redesign it, but for an average amount, these work really well. This is fairly self-explanatory. I found a giant sticker and put it on one of the doors. Then I brushed on a couple coats of Mod Podge to help stick it down and seal it. So the other door wouldn't feel lonely. I took my logo once again, sprayed it in black. Watch this fun trick. I let that dry. And then I put it on again, just offset a little bit up and to the right and did it in white. Old school drop shadow. And then I'm gonna take a rag with a little bit of mineral spirits on it and quickly wipe up any mistakes we might've made. <laughs> I give them a quick coat of poly just to protect them, and while they're drying, I'll do the miter slots for the table saw. I use a straight edge to help line up with the slots in the table saw itself and route out about an inch wide track. Now I'm gonna wipe down the whole surface with a mixture of poly and paint thinner, which is something I learned over on Mike Farrington's channel. He has a must-see video called Very Good Router Table. Incredibly smart guy and an actual professional. And by thinning out the poly, it helps absorb better into the MDF and hardens nicely. And then you can give it a really light sanding and put on a coat of paste wax to make it nice and smooth. I'm gonna put a link to his video below. You gotta watch it. Ooh, as advertised, I'm very excited about this. This actually worked. I start with a piece of angle iron, similar to this one, but you don't need 96 inches, you just need a foot. So however you need to, hacksaw or a rotary cutter, cut yourself off a foot, and then I drew out some corners 
used a metal cutting blade on my jigsaw and smoothed them out on my sander. I have not really worked with much aluminum and it was all much easier than I thought it would be. It's like wood, but with worse splinters. A drill press, no problem. I drilled two semi-random holes, one on each side, and then I clamped it to my table saw and voiding the warranty, drilled right on through those holes. Gotta admit, felt pretty good. And yes, no worries, I did check to make sure I wasn't drilling into anything vital. The saw was not affected. I put my, for lack of a better term, aluminum cleat in place and I'm securing it through those two holes we drilled with two nuts and bolts. There's enough room underneath to get your hand under and give it a little finger tightening and then grab it with some pliers and crank it down so it's really secure. When I had it good and snug, I set it back up, and it should look roughly like To make the surface for the extension wing, I'm going to recycle the top for my old mobile workbench. Cut that down to size. That's 3 quarter MDF. And then to make the support that will hold it up, we will use 3 quarter ply and we're gonna rip a 45 degree angle on both ends in the same direction. I'm gonna also make two pleats, and that's all we need. I'm gonna round over the shelf, which is so much cleaner now that we have a working router table with dust collection, yay! And now we can work on our plywood support. Uh, in order to reduce weight, I'm gonna drill out a couple holes and I couldn't decide on a simpler pattern or a complicated pattern, so I split the difference and did a four by three just using a two inch hole saw. And then I sprayed them gray to match the bench. To make sure the shelf was at a proper height, I took a piece of scrap that's the same thickness as our shelf will be, and it's a little low, so I grabbed a scrap piece of hardwood that I had lying around and now it's a little high. So I'm gonna take that strip of hardwood over to the planer and run it through a couple times until I get it to the proper thickness so that our shelf will be nice and flush with the top of the table saw. To attach it, we're just gonna glue and then clamp in place. And while the glue's drying, it occurred to me I need a good way to keep the shelf from sliding around on our aluminum cleat. So I popped the cleat off, drilled a hole right through the middle of it on the bottom that will accept a dowel that I had. And then I'm gonna make a matching hole on the bottom of the shelf in a little bit to accept that dowel. Since I had the cleat off, I figured I might as well take the opportunity to spray it with a rust protectant, which not only will help prevent it from rusting, but looks pretty cool too. Okay, now to figure out exactly where the support's gonna go, I removed my table saw, held one of the cleats in place after pre-drilling them, and then I hold the support right up against the edge with the 45 degree angle, and then I attach that bottom cleat. That should give us basically a friction fit. When you put it in there and push up against it, that shouldn't be able to go anywhere. So we put our table saw back in place and I've reattached the aluminum cleat, and now I hold up the shelf, now that it's at the proper height, and I'm gonna mark where the bolts are on the table. And then it's a simple job to just notch those out with the jigsaw. That's also why it was important to get the shelf to the right height first, because these notches cut into the hardwood strip that we have on the bottom of it. So you gotta got have that on there already. Now we can line it up and make sure it worked, perfect. And I didn't get it on camera, but I reached underneath it and marked where that hole was, where it attached to the shelf. And then I took the shelf upside down and drilled out the matching hole and put the dowel in. Little glue, hammer it in, and let that sit. Also, this is probably overkill, I had these two rare earth magnets sitting around, so I drilled some shallow holes for those. Uh, I marked them with some marker to make sure I put the right side down. And I just used some crazy glue to put those in there. I'm not sure they really did anything. Larger magnets would have been a better choice, but that's what I had. And once that dowel's dry, we don't need it to be sticking out so much. So I used a pull saw to remove that. And then we can test to make sure it all works. Put up a level, my large level. And you can see how the dowel drops into that hole we made. Now. 
To figure out where it goes on the bottom of the shelf, I'm going to hold up the support and I'm going to move it back and forth until it is exactly level. And once I have it where it's level, I'm going to draw a line and I'm also going to hold up the matching cleat and mark that out as well. Then I can remove all of it, uh, turn the shelf upside down, and it's install the cleat where I had marked it out. Now all you have to do is literally hold the support, drop in the top, put the dowel in the hole, and let go. Pushing some weight on it, it's not going anywhere. It's super easy. And breaks down super easy. This is not something I set up every time, but since building this bench, I have cut a few larger sheets of half inch ply and it worked awesome. And that's it. We finished. Bench built. Congratulations on watching all those. I hope you like it. I hope you got something out of it. I think it's a good build. I think it's a useful build. If not, you can modify it, make it work for you. You know, there's a lot of things you can do. Definitely you're not allowed to put an octopus sticker on yours. That's mine. Uh, download the plans. Check out my band, Quasar What What. We're pretty good. Thanks very much. And remember, uh, if I can do it, you can definitely do it. Take care. Thank you.